Yeah. So I think people are by and large uh, interested in uh, like their sections, which are usually 15, 20, 15 boats or thereabouts. Um, but uh, even being able to get it down to a division, which might be a hundred boats is a lot better. Yeah, and then you can, that's the people you wanna see, right? Right, right. There's no point in comparing you know, a boat that leaves on Saturday to a boat in the cruising section left on Friday, yep. um, or, you know, uh, a, a Tartan 10 to a TP-52. You, that information yep. isn't really that useful to, to either one. So the more you can narrow it down, the better. All right. Well, this is great. I see 48, oh, now four, now back to 48. Uh, 49 people on online already, which is great. Uh, I'm going to give it another minute or so. Uh, thank you all for being patient. All right, we're holding pretty steady here. Uh, so let's get this uh, let's get this started. Good, good evening, everyone. My name is Kevin Foote. I'm a member of the Chicago Race and Mackinac Committee for 2023. It is our pleasure to welcome back uh, Nick and Karen uh, and their team at Predict Wind for the third seminar, to, the third webinar tonight. Uh, where I believe we're going to be covering mostly the offshore app and actually using Predict Wind offshore. I'm sure we're all going to uh, learn quite a bit and, and get into some of the real nitty gritty and some of the details. Uh, as we've done before, please questions, put them in the Q&A. Uh, we'll try to answer those as uh, we go along or at least get back to them uh, towards, the, uh, towards the end. Uh, but please put them in the Q&A. If you have any technical issues, uh, you can put those in the chat. Um, but I, I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to help you with any technical issues. Um, so good luck. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Nick and Karen and take it away, guys. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank you for having us uh, once again. Um, yeah, so as mentioned, we are going to focus on as if we were using um you know we would we were doing the race today and so we'll just run through a couple of scenarios um so i will talk about polars once again just because they're so important um so sorry if you've watched the other two webinars you've heard me talk about polars twice but um i just don't think we can um emphasize the importance of that enough and now you know because it obviously relates right you know to our setup for our weather routing and so that's what we need to know about so I will jump straight into a screen share. As mentioned, Karen's on the Q&A. Um, if you have questions in there as I go along. <clears throat> uh, so just in case you haven't come, because I see this, we've got quite a few people on today haven't come to any of the other webinars. I will do a little bit of um, talking about the Predict Wind app. Well, actually we'll be on the Predict Wind website. And that's what we use when we're in mobile data and uh, Wi-Fi range. Um, and we'll be doing some stuff with our polars on there. So that we'll, we'll be spending a brief amount of time in the in the forecast website, just on our polars. Um, and then we will be looking at the offshore app and looking at uh, what we download before we leave and then what we download underway on a um, SAT connection. So. I will jump over here. So I'm into the forecast website now. So, and we're going to come in here and we're going to do a couple of things. First, I mean, um, you know, obviously before we start the race, we would look at big picture stuff and we've got, we've been through this, you know, we've got our wind maps. 
um, gas maps, cape, rain, you know, so that we can see all that that bigger picture stuff. I'm actually on the observation page at the moment. So, you know, we can see observations uh, all around us, uh, which is super useful on the day of the race to be looking at the observations and seeing what is actually happening in real time out there. Um, and, you know, comparing that to the weather model, you know, what uh, do the observations line up with the model? And, you know, along that same sort of, uh, you know, line of thought, we also have the validation tool in here. And you can go in there and have a look at that before, you know, before the race. And you might have a look at that at a couple of, you know, somewhere further up the, up the lake and just see which model is performing well this week. Um, this does change uh, <clears throat> regularly. And so you do want to come and have a look at this and see what's what's performing well. You can see here we've got the mean average error for wind speed and the mean average error for direction. Um, so yeah, quite interesting to look at that for a few different places and see which models are doing well. And you know, as as always, we see the ECMWF doing well in there. And um, one of my favorite models is the PWG uh, also doing well. I was surprised to see Spire doing well. So that's that's pretty cool too. So that's a model that we don't see many places. Um, and so I'll just go off that. Yeah, so yeah, worth having a look at your, your different um, big picture stuff in there. And then um, we're going to come down here into our tools. And oh, before I go into the weather routing, I'm going to talk about the YB events because we were just talking about that. So <clears throat> if you want to be able to see the competitors, uh, your competitors during the race, um, we will set up, uh, we just need, we were just talking about this before the webinar, we will set up a bunch of um, uh, divisions in here and so you can come in and and select the division that you're in and um and then you will then be able to download that position data into the offshore app while you're underway so uh, even on a sat connection uh, it's important to make sure that you do you you download into the offshore app before you leave um to just get all the information up to date uh, on a on a land based wi-fi so that when you go into sat connection it's just updating it's not getting any back data uh, but you'll be able to select your division in here so we'll get that set up um, soon and um, I'll just put the trans back in there so that we get some data later okay so yeah that's if you want to know where that is you can go into the into the forecast website and then tools, and then YB events, and you can select the race. Um, and that's when you're in your account, and then you'll be able to download that data into the offshore app. Same thing here with our weather routing preferences. So I've gone up to come up here to weather routing, and then I want to click on routing preferences. And this is where we're going to talk about our polars once again. Uh, we need to always make sure that we're getting the fastest time. The comfort setting is for is a cruising thing. You don't want to be using the comfort setting. It will uh, not give you the fastest time. Uh, something that we should always be aware of is this polar speed adjustment. We can adjust this during the race if we need to while we're underway. We can do that in the offshore app. We'll look at that later. Um, we can put tack and drive penalties in. Um, you know how long that takes. It's in seconds. Um, so basically it assumes you sort of stop for that period of time. So you don't want to make that too big. Uh, boat type, I just clicked on predefined. Uh, you can come in here, if you haven't looked at this before, come in here, you can select a different type of, of boat. Um, you know, if, if your boat's in here, that's great. Um, <clears throat> you know, we can select a boat and we can copy that to the advanced polar. And then we can click on the advanced tab there and we can see our polar table. And I've, I've got a J111 here and you can see here, this is true wind speed down here. So, and then for each of those wind speeds, we've got true wind angle and boat speed, true wind angle, boat speed, 
10 knots true wind angle boat speed and so obviously these are our upwind targets and then we have a bunch of different uh you know more cracked off angles until we're into reaching um and you know and then 135 sort of our our downwind angles this looks like our downwind targets um you know true wind angle downwind targets um i would delete this 180 column i don't want that um i just want about it i would want to sell to my targets in particular so you can adjust these you can run your routing look at the routing output and come back and adjust these um and when you're on the advanced polar you want to make sure that um when you come down here to the wave polar that this is um this weight these weights here uh, and the waterline length and the beam that they're all correct uh particularly the displacement especially if you've taken a bunch of stuff out of your boat you might want to um you know drop that down a little bit and um check that you're a mono hull um or unless you're a cat um and yeah and away you go so that's our um polar so our boat polar and our wave polar um and we can further down here we can put la uh, depth avoidance in uses a contour to um your depth contour for our router so that your router is not running over uh, getting too close to land um because we're not going to get um you know that close and um you can change that to whichever the depth contour you want i quite like the five meter myself um and you can always push things if you want to and yeah we have the advanced routing adjustments if it was particularly a particularly gusty race uh, you know as in you ran the route you looked at it and you could see that it was going to be you know 20 to 30 you might you know so uh yeah averages are around 20 but you can see in the gusts you've got 30 or whatever you might come in here and put this to 110 or something but other than that i wouldn't i wouldn't play with it um but you can do that because your routing is run off the average wind speed not the gusts i'm going to turn them off <clears throat> so we've set up our polars um if you want some help with your polars um or, or you're confused as to how you change any of this stuff uh you can reach out to our support team they're they're pretty um onto it with this sort of stuff Just seeing if my weight changes not yet yeah, that's good if i go back to the pretty fine but yeah you can oh, because i've got that polar set i can use the advanced or the predefined it, it, it doesn't matter but if i adjust it i want to use the advanced polar so then i can come over here to my weather routing and i could run my route and at this point i'm not uh i'll just click on download and if the, i guess this is what I would do, be doing beforehand, um, but this might be what I'm doing now, um, or I might even just be doing this in the offshore app the whole time. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing this screen because we've set up what we want to set up in here, and then now we want to go to the offshore app, which is what we're going to be using, um, you know, during the race and what I'll be doing all my prep on. What, what any race where I'm going, um, even a 50 miler, I will use the offshore app, or 30 miles. I will use the offshore app so that I've always got the data there. So the, that's the the big difference here is that the uh, Predict Wind app and the Predict Wind website does not save your um, uh, maps, et cetera, offline. And whereas the offshore app does save, go away, does save, uh, it's something flashing up on my screen, does save your data offline. So let's go to that. Um, okay, <clears throat> so here we are in the offshore app. Um, I'm on my Mac, uh, so you could be doing this on an iPad, um, a PC, uh, Android, tablet, phone, iPhone. Um, yeah, whatever you want to use, you can um, 
you, you know, which, you know, of any of those think those platforms, you can have the offshore app running on there. So before we uh, get too technical on this, you know, the basics are um, that the green is our start waypoint and wherever we are, we need to make sure that we put the start waypoint um, to where we, what our position is. You'll see that when I move that, that I actually get the lat long come up. If I click on that edit button, I get this box come up over here and I can actually manually write in my lat long in here. Um, if I have a GPS enabled device, I can click on that little button there and I'm not, I'm not gonna do it because it'll take me to Auckland. Um, and then you've got your waypoints. Uh, and so I've got a I've got an intermediary waypoint in there because I wanna go uh, around the end of the reef further up the, the lake or the lighthouse. Um, and then I've got uh, the my end waypoint there, which is my finish spot. So but as I'm underway, I need to be adjusting this um, start waypoint or putting it in there. So if you've got an Iridium Go, uh, it, it will have a little white dot on the screen and you can move it, just move it to that, or you can enter your lat long in here or use the go to button. Um, simple stuff, but important to make sure we get it right. So, you know, if you're updating, you might be updating your route a few times. You might, for whatever reason, you might have gone away from what your planned course was. And so you would, you might need to do um, some more regular updates. So you, that's how you do it. I'll just close that little box there and close that. And you'll see here, if I click on this grib uh, tab on the left-hand side over here, I've got all these boxes come up on the screen and these yellow and pink boxes are high resolution grib areas. So that, that's for the PWG and the PWE model. If you want to know about models, there's a webinar we did a while ago talking about models, but essentially um, shorter term, high resolution modeling is generally better. So PWG, PWE, um, the HER and the NAM, uh, short term. But, uh, you know, uh, the ECMWF is also pretty high resolution, you know, 9K res. Uh, we have nine kilometer resolution grips in here and your routing is always run off the highest resolution for all the models even the UKMO and Spire at uh, 11 uh, sorry 12 and 15 kilometer res is still pretty high resolution um, but yeah resolution does matter um, so that's why we uh, you'll hear me talk about high resolution modeling so that's what those colored boxes are this other one here this is our actual global group area and so if let's say we were getting uh, the UKMO, the Spire, or GFS, um, or ECMWF. This is at the actual grip area that we would get. If I move this, when I move this around, it actually changes my grip area. But there's plenty of times that we may want to manually control this. And why we want to manually control that is that we, when we're on our satellite connection, we want to um, limit uh the area that we're downloading so that it because that's one of one factor in controlling our file size so i can change that area you'll see the um where where it's uh where the route is traveling that it's picking up those high res areas as well and so it would automatically download if i select them to be downloaded so i can go back to where the routing You'll see all my data there. Everything in the offshore app is here until you replace it with something else. So if you download a bunch of stuff uh, before you leave on your high-speed uh, land-based connection, until you replace it, it stays there. So that's um, important to know uh, because you can, A, you can end up with old data in there, but B, that um, it can also be a good thing to keep some of your, um, some data there that you wanted to keep. Um, until it's replaced. So I'm going to click on the download button over this left hand side here and you will see that uh, we have this box has popped out. This is 
Um, you, if you're on an iPad, you, it does have a slightly different look, but everything is the same, uh, same functionality. Uh, you know, these, these are, um, you know, this is called weather routing uh, preferences, for instance, this part here. So, but before we leave, we can, you'll see down the bottom here, we have 21.7 uh, megabytes. So that's our estimated file size. Uh, that's a lot of data, but before we leave, we would download everything we can get. Um, we want to get you know as much data as as possible, um, and so that would, you know, so then we've 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 got all that data to analyze before the start, and we make our plans about what we're going to be doing. Um, you know, we would plan as far ahead as we think is reasonable, um, and that might be the whole way to the finish, and then we update our plan as we go. So I will just run through this now, and then I think we will come back to it. Um, so you'll see here, I've got a three hourly time step. Um, I've got three days, let's make it five. Um, not that it's gonna take us that long, we might wanna see what the weather's gonna be like when we finished. Um, and then high resolution. And so that is my, all my high resolution models. I'm gonna download them. Um, here's my models I can download over here. Um, and, you know, there might be a situation later in the race where you might just get one of these models. Um, if you, you know, it went really light and you wanted to see what was going to happen in the next uh, five hours or, or whatever, you might just get one of those high res models. Um, and then, and so to turn any of these stuff on, on or off, I just click on them. Um, and over here, we can select our different parameters. So we're going to keep all of those in there. Um, we've got our start time. We could, we could, if we're underway, we would press now. Um, we're going to pretend it's, a, you know, we're not starting for a couple of hours, um, even though I haven't got my start at the start pin at the start of the race. Um, then we've got our start time in the future, but normally when we're underway, it would always be now. And these are my, this little cog wheel here. Uh, this, this is called weather routing preferences. <clears throat> and again, you can see here, it knows um, what my polar is. Uh, and here's where I can adjust these polar percentages. So 95% is 5% slower upwind than, than the base polar. Downwind night, you might adjust these, um, you know, before you go. And I've got the wave polar set up and my depth avoidance. I can turn off the tidal and ocean currents because we don't have them on the lake. And I could change my advanced routing adjustments. Just move my zoom controls. So I'll just click on close there. Uh, GMDSS, we're going to get that just because we want to see if there's any, um, you know, anything nasty has developed since we left that we haven't heard about um observations we want to see uh, how the gribs look against the um observations and then i'm going to click on next you'll still see we've still got a really big file size there and then here we still we have the yb events selected and so that's where we're going to download all our data um for the yb event uh and then here, I'm going to go through this again, by the way. Um, you'll see here we have our connection types. Um, I'm going to stay on the web because if I go into anything else, I'll cut you off. But uh, if you had an Iridium Go, you would need to change your Wi-Fi connection up here. Uh, select, you know, add that to the um, Iridium Go Wi-Fi or Go Exec uh, Wi-Fi or whatever connection you have. And then you click Download All. <coughs> so then... Everything that we've um, selected previously is now downloaded. Um, all of our gribs, all of this is going to be saved in here. Um, none of it disappears until we replace it. Uh, you'll see there that my weather routing is um, thinking, and that's good because what's that, what that's done is it's sent um, all my information off to the Predict Win servers. It is calculating them on the servers, and then it's sending you that packet of data back. The cool thing about that is when we come into our next download, we actually don't, you know, we can just rely on 
well, we can rely on the data and the weather router to be more accurate than our GRIBs because we may not be able to download high resolution GRIBs later on, but the weather routing is using the latest high resolution data it can. So you see there that we've uh, downloaded all our GRIBs <clears throat> and our YB events data that was 64 kilobytes. That's because I hadn't downloaded it before. Um, and that was actually the transpack I think I've downloaded and my observations. So I'll just click on close. And this is where we can start to analyze what, what we've got from our, our weather routing. I'm in the graphs. We're in the, we're in the tables. Obviously, we've got the map here. We can look at the map. Yep, lots of pretty colors. Um, but before we even get into that, we really want to um, start to think about how we would analyze some of this data obviously the um you know the weather router is incredibly clever does some amazing stuff for you but you've got to sail the boat and you've got to make the most of this data that you've been given to make the good decisions so you know pretty whilst the there is a little bit of variation between the models the overarching sort of trend here is that we have got a downward trend uh, for the next 24 hours in the wind speed. Um, yep, there's that little spike up in the in the near near term. So that's something we want to think about. Um, but then essentially our trend is down and yes, we are going to have some ups and downs in that, but the overarching trend <clears throat> is down. So that's going to already start to play into what we're thinking about, you know. Um, if it's, you know, we're up here where we're averaging 20, um, you know, we might be, we might not have our biggest sales on. Um, we, you know, we, we might, we might have a reef in, um, you know, if there's other factors, which we'll look at in shortly, if there's other factors there that um, we don't necessarily like the look of, you know, we might think about how we're going to, um, handle that you know 20 knots average we'll go and um, have a look at the gas map in a bit um, and see what you know whether that's much higher um, and if there's cape and rain and things like that you know we're going to get thunderstorms that's the stuff we want to know about <clears throat> so but beyond that once we know that this is passed uh, you know we've got this downward trend so we want to start thinking about what sales we're going to need um, you know, will that play into our strategy? Where do we want to be positioned against the, the fleet, knowing that it's going to go lighter? You know, for instance, if we've got, if we're sailing downwind, so we've got the true wind direction changing here, and then we've got our true wind angle. Uh, it actually looks like we go from downwind to upwind. Um, but, you know, would, you know, so that how, where do we position ourselves? Do we want to be further, you know, the router says that we want to be, further out into the lake or do we want to be close to the shore you might have some um, other reasons why you'd want to do that um if, if if this was going into downwind you know and, and the breeze was going lighter would we want to position ourselves uh to to leeward or to windward personally i think you'd want to go to leeward uh, of, of your competition so that then you might be able to sail hotter angles if you need to uh things like that so this is where you need to start thinking about the information that's here and how it's going to work for you uh, you'll see here we do have some rain um, and what is important about that is that we see rain and we see cape. So those two things combined are uh, an indicator of thunderstorms and so we want to know, you know, when's this going to happen? Um, is it going to be day or night? Um, are we going to see it coming? Are we going to be prepared to quickly reduce sail um, at this time period? And we would we would have, um, you know, want to put a, a, we'll look at the maps more for this, but we would want to, you know, have this in our mind and part of our plan. Temperature, you know, not a, not a huge one, but, you know, uh, as we go into uh, the night, you know, the temperature does drop down. Um, it rains, you know, we want to make sure everyone on board is actually keeping warm. You know, we've got warm food, things like that, taking care of our crew so they can sail our boat well. 
you know, that's pretty cold if you ask me. Um, <clears throat> pressure, you know, it's the pressure lining up with our um, barometer on board. So wave height. Um, again, it's probably more of a, a safety thing. Um, and, you know, it could be partly a boat setup thing. This is the combined wind wave and swell. Um, and we can actually look at the uh, the different wave states. And especially if you've had a big system go through, this will be more relevant than if you've had a consistent breeze for, for a while. Um, and that, that output, this is why we put our wave routing stuff in before. Um, you know, in our wave period of the primary swell, let's go back to our combined. Oh, we could actually look at the wind wave, wind wave direction. You know, they're different, so it is going to be a bit, a bit jiggly. Um, and our period, uh, you know, it, that that could be a big deal with it, with with how we set up our boat. The waves are close together; it's going to be quite a sharp chop. You know, we we might hold on to a bit more sail we might set our you know we, we you know i know that sometimes if you're on a, on uh, depending on your boat uh you know i've sailed on boats that it's hard to move your jib cars you know do we want to set that up early so that we're actually got a bit more punch in our our jib and, and stuff like that so again just thinking about what we've got coming uh this is our role <clears throat> so on any day, uh you know that we would want to look at this in the uh for the race um Four degrees is where we think it starts to get pretty gnarly. So this is looking, uh, you know, very, you know, not not too bad at all. You know, we've got two degrees of RMS, of roll and RMS. Essentially, we just want to look at that and make sure it's not too nasty. If that was getting up, you know, up to four and above, we would want to make sure that we have the right safety protocols on board for, you know, keeping our, keeping our crew safe, you know, you don't come on deck until you're clipped on, for instance. Um, and same with the vertical acceleration. Uh, we know if this goes above 0.2, that you might uh, have people getting sick on board. No boat slamming, which is great. So we don't need to think about conserving our boat, you know, buttoning it off when we, um, et cetera. So uh, you can see we're already, you know, thinking about um, things we need, you know, what, what sails we might be using. Um, what you know what order they want to be on the boat what what tack we're going to be on the most um stuff like that so we can come across here i just need to move my zoom controls again and i can for each of the weather models i can look at the different scenarios um you know my course over ground my speed over ground my true wind angle so you know this is where we can easily see uh those numbers which sails are we going to be using if we are, you know, doing these true wind angles um, and this much wind, you know, can we hold on to our, our big gear at what stage might we need to do a peel if this breeze dies down, uh, stuff like that. Um, and we would want to be ready. We were, you know, and we could also be confident of, if we see, you know, at this time here, we see that it's 17 to 22 um you know is that fine we can leave the big the big gear up um because we know that the trend is going to be down uh, but then we might also want to think about you know we saw the um the cape and the rain before is there going to be thunderstorms you know do we want to be aware of that and think about that stuff this is also where you would look at um you know whether your polars match up with what speeds your boat actually uh, does is this output here too fast for my boat um so yeah uh we can come in here and and obviously we have a bunch of different stuff across here you know a summary the average speed um you know the maximum wind speed uh maximum gusts uh which is always interesting to look at not a massive difference you know so, well, you know 19 to 28 there yeah, the differences uh you know and we can look at all these different things we've got all our positions for each point along the route um but what you may want to do is export your route um if you have run this on if you've got some nav so software on the devices the easiest way to do it 
Um, and, you know, say you're on your iPad, you could export the, the route to a particular, uh, to a piece of nav software. And so you could actually just be sailing to that. Personally, I would pick key waypoints um, and then I would update them periodically. So we've looked at the tables <clears throat> and then we can come in and look at the map. And just, I mean, if you'll see here, if we zoom in, uh, I'm on a high res box. So this is a, um, a one kilometer resolution PWG box. And you'll see as I actually move the time slider up, once we catch up to it, uh, as I move up, it will actually go into, this is now an eight kilometer box. And you'll, you'll know that because it's much bigger. Um, and so that's an eight kilometer resolution modeling that we're looking at there. If I flick over to the ECMWF, let's just go between them. They look pretty similar. Um, the ECMWF, you'll see that uh, it's just got that this is that box that I selected er earlier, and it's showing us, um, you know, that area. Excuse me, I'll just have a small drink. So we're here, um, you know, we're running our route and you can see as we get further up the lake here, we've definitely got um, a bit of uh, change, I guess. So this is where we go into our upwind and this is going to be, you know, tricky to manage and probably the, you know, this transition managing that is going to be probably the, the, the difference between winning and losing the race. Um, you know, like, because I think probably before that, it was all pretty straightforward, um, maybe a bit of a boat speed thing going on. But then if you manage these transitions well, you can, um, you know, you'll often hear it, it talked about, it looks like you've got plenty going on there. And you can kind of see here why, so we're looking at the black line here, and you can see that this, most of this routing here is actually setting up for what's happening up up the lake here and this is where we need to <laughs> work out which model is doing the best job for us and it's very interesting to see why it thinks we could do this oh man this looks tricky <laughs> uh, so but the good thing about this is that this is now by the time we get to here all of the all of the models will have updated. So um, let's pretend we've got to here and we've sailed up here, or maybe we've stuck with the consensus and we've gone with uh, you know we've gone with all of these uh, the th the three models that decided to go this way, um, and we've ended up here, and we're ready to update and we'll run through our download as though we are on a SAT connection. Uh, before we do that, I want to come back here and I want to turn on the Cape. Where do we see that? It's not, yeah, it's not very high, is it? So I'm looking, well, I'm looking for that color change there. It's obviously with this change, uh, that we get some CAPE, which is convective available potential energy. And if we look at that with the rain, I assume that was where we saw rain. Yeah, so we see these rain cells and we wanna just, this is something that we would wanna think about these uh, cells coming off the land and what the, the, the different models say. Not a huge amount of cape there, so maybe it's not a big deal. Uh, usually, usually when we see a frontal band like that um, and we see a lot of cape, then it's going to have a bang. Um, and in your part of the world, you want to think about your thunderstorms, obviously. Um, we could also just look, make sure that we look, we look at our gust. Obviously, early on here, you know, it was pretty windy, 22, 18 to 22. So... Not a massive difference in the ECMWF there between the average wind speed and the gusts. So we're looking at the gusts now. 
if we go to, to the wind tab, that's the average wind speed. So not a huge difference there. So yeah, quite interesting to, to take note of that. Um, yeah, okay. So now we've, yeah, we've sailed up to here um, and we, we've got some big decisions to make. Um, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go, I've clicked on the download and I'll move my Zoom controls once again. And so we're on our set connection. So we need to make a whole lot of changes here so that we can get a file size that we can download. Whether we're on, I mean, if we're on an, uh, uh, an Iridium Go exec, we can actually get a pretty big, um, some pretty big files, especially if we're racing and we don't mind that we're gonna burn through some data. Um, but we're, if we're on Iridium Go, we actually need to, we, we are limited by the speed of the device um, as, as to how much we can download. And there's no great um, harm in that because our weather routing is going to use the high resolution modeling anyway. And so we only need to look at the, um, you know, it's fine if we can look at the lower res. So I'm going to change this time step of the grips between three, from three to 12, which means that the software is interpolating between those two points, uh, time points. And, but it will help us get our file size smaller. Uh, I know that we're only, well, yeah, we're, we're a day away from the finish. Um, so let's just get two days of weather. We can't get the high resolution because it's still too big. And this is where you're going to see this file size down here, this estimated file size, you're going to see this change a lot. And all of a sudden we're at 109 kilobytes. So that high resolution modeling is really big. Um, and so we want to, you know, think about doing that. So something that we could do here is we could actually go, I just want to look at the at one model. Uh, for instance, we could go, I want to get the ECMWF 9K. And so I can go to the high resolution and you'll see there, I've got 317 kilobytes. It's a big file for an Iridium Go. It's easy file size for an exec um, and you could just get that model um, you can also change that grip area that we looked at before uh, and you can make that bigger and smaller um, but you could you know content, condense that down and it's the same if you were um, you know let's see if we yeah see we way too big if we get the PWG high res because there's lots of different models there um, but anyway let's get a bunch of models and yeah our estimated file size is well in and uh, we're going to change this time to eight o'clock tonight uh, this is on my time um, and we're going to keep all our other parameters the same there and we're going to update our yb tracking and so you'll see here something I should have mentioned before. Um, or we've got all our estimated file sizes down here. And then I'm going to, again, this is where I would select my coexec or my go or whatever other satellite connection I had. And I'm going to click download all. And it's going to download my files. So it knows that I've moved up the lake and it is running my routing from there. And as I've mentioned, it is using the highest resolution data that it can get and the latest data it can get. So it's quite clever what it does there. Um, and we are all downloaded because I've got the green lines and the, uh, the green ticks and the blue bars have all gone across. If I click on close. And you see there we come back to our, our graph and we have all that information there. Uh, so you see here, we is this an easier decision than before? Possibly. You know, you'd have to look at um, look at what 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 else was going on i mean we might come over 
I mean, this is, yeah, we, because we've started in the future, we can't actually compare this to our observations. We need to come back to here to compare to our observations, but it's because I'm trying to be in the future. Um, but if I wanted to, I do have all my observations there. Obviously, that can only work for now. It can't work for my time in the future. Interesting to see that that, if that is now, oh, hang on, no, it's not. Oh, yeah. Whoa, what have I done? There we go. Oops. Anyhow, I need to get that to now. Um, but we can compare if I'd actually downloaded for now, um, then it wouldn't be wouldn't be so difficult for me. Uh, our GMDSS, obviously, this is any of our warnings. You know, are we gonna? Is there gonna be thunderstorms? This is written by a meteorologist. Uh, we can get this data in here, um, and we can see. You know, that does the Met Service? Uh, you know, local meteorologists that have written this. Do they think that we're gonna get? our um you know thunderstorms like we you know we, we with that frontal band that we saw earlier um our yb events so you'll see there it's zoomed right out um but this is what it looks like you'll see here that we've got the transpac uh boats and we can see all their tracks and we can click on a boat and we can see their course, their uh, boat speed, um, and the time that that was that position was. So pretty good to know uh, with with your um, you know with with your competitors where they are, what they're doing, how fast they're going. Um, you know, really good strategic uh, piece of data to have. Um, yeah. You can overlay that uh, the starter with your weather routing. Personally, I wouldn't do it. It becomes very, it looks very complicated. Um, so, but yeah, but knowing where they are and seeing on the map, you'll be able to see where you are and you'll be able to see where where they are. Would be the boat in front, of course. Um, so back to our weather routing. Uh, we have downloaded our route. Um, we can look at the different models and the different scenarios um, or on gusts, so we need to get a wind uh, and see, you know, run through these different scenarios. And then we might actually want to run this through. And as, as the conditions change around us, we might want to go, okay, this model, especially with this change, this model is actually reflecting what we're seeing now. And so this is most likely going to give us the best route for that time period. Um, yeah, I could carry on some more. You'll see, so just so we know what's happening here, see when I run out of wind data here, that is because I have selected a start time in the future. Uh, and I'm actually getting to the end of my two days. So you'll see my grubs are actually starting back here, which is now. And then I run out of them up here when I run out of my time period. So I should have got more days of grubs. Um, but if that was, uh, if I come back over here, now, and download that again, it doesn't, it's not actually going to download all those grubs again. It may look like it is, but it's not because it already knows that I've got them. But it is going to recalculate my weather route for now. And um, you'll see we have a very different looking route in a second. Um, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly because if there's some questions, happy to answer those. But I think we, yeah, let's have a look at our new route. And you'll see there, everything is for now. And so if I go back to my observations now, it all lines up with what we're seeing. If I zoom in, I should get some more. There we go. So very interesting to see. 
And I would say that model is looking pretty not close to our observations. Cool. I will stop sharing and answer any questions if we have any. We've had um, heaps of questions. They were went really good, but um, they're all answered, hopefully. <laughs> Not too confusing for people, but yeah, just come into support at predictwin.com if you've got any other questions or you need further clarification. But yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Um, and this webinar is recorded, so you can go back and watch it, especially if I've gone through stuff um, that you possibly haven't heard about before. Uh, you can go back, watch it again, um, ask some questions if you need to, and yeah but other than that good luck for the race i hope it goes really well for everyone and i see some there might be another one or two questions uh filtering in um uh one that i had i i don't know if it's, i'm going to take advantage of my spot here to ask it ask it live uh tips or tricks for uh, sort of getting and maintaining that satellite connection with either the Iridium Go or the Exec. There's a lot of gear, you know, there's the marine packages, things like that. Just what, uh, given that most of your audience here uses it once a year. Um, yeah, I mean, um, Kieran's the expert at that, but I, I, I can answer the question. Uh, making sure your firmware is up to date. So if you, if you, you know, if you haven't used your, your unit for a year, um, I would get it out now. I would activate your airtime and I would test it. Um, there's been firmware updates. And so we have a, an article on how to do that. Um, and I would, yeah, pra have a practice with it. And we, you also, um, yeah, the external antenna is pretty critical, uh, especially for the go. For the Go One, uh, the um, the exec is faster. So you you know if you were to have, take that outside and you didn't have an external antenna, it can be you know it can be better. But again, ex an external antenna is means that you can have the unit plugged in. It's always charged up. It can always be on. Um, and yeah, that's that's what I would uh, recommend there. Um, and I can answer some of these questions that have popped in as well. Uh, what system would you recommend with the Go Exec on the boat? I'm a massive fan of my laptop. If you've got a boat that is big enough that you can use your laptop, it's it's awesome. Um, but in saying that, um, most of the sailing that I've done where I've used it has been on a, a 35 footer that's very, very wet. Um, and so I've used a, an iPad. Um, but I'm a Mac fan, so. And the BNG integration is pretty old uh, and it doesn't actually have full functionality. Um, hopefully, BNG are going to update their stuff soon. And, but I, we don't, we would recommend that you did all your weather analysis on, uh, you know, a laptop or an iPad, uh, et cetera. Um, and then put your key waypoints into your plotter is, is what I would do. Um, and I can't answer the question about the PEP wave antenna. Do you know the answer to that, Kieran? No, I was looking at that one too. I'd have to go and see, you know, most devices don't interfere with the Iridium Go antenna. The PEP wave, I'm not sure I'd have to research it. Yep. So maybe just um, come in to send an email to support asking that question and say for Kieran, and then I can look it up. Yeah, radar will interfere. If not, this is not, not not what we're talking about here. But if most things don't, but it doesn't, you know, an external antenna does need a clear view of the horizon. Same for, um, and but yeah, the yeah, it can't be on the same plane as your radar, uh, horizontal plane, vertical plane, horizontal. Yeah, horizontal. Cool. All right. I think everybody, uh, if you have a question, get it in quickly. Otherwise, we'll. Uh... Yeah, I mean, but do reach out to our um, support team. They, they, they're sailors. They know what they're doing. 
and they know what they're talking about, they'll give you some great answers um, to your specific questions, uh, especially, you know, as you go through. But I guess my my advice now would be get as prepared as you can. There's so many jobs to do on the boat, you know, at night when you're not at the boat, sit down, spend some time looking at your weather, use the offshore app. Um, if you can spend some time at the boat, you know, make sure your SAT connections are working, make sure you know how to do it. Cool. All right. One more question. Sorry, there's one more question there, but I've got a chainsaw guy outside my house. Do you want to answer that one? <laughs> As you update your start point, I assume you use, yes, you do use now. Yeah, sorry. I, uh, yeah, I, I was trying to sort of show what would happen as we were in the future. Uh, but yes, now is once you're underway, you're always, your start time's always now. It's actually the default is now. So you shouldn't get too tricked on that one, but yes, it's important to make sure you'll you'll you will notice, hopefully, uh, that that it's is starting in the future, um, if you haven't done that. Cool, great. And I think well, we will as soon as we have the um, the YB URLs, we will add those in, um, so that you can add your add yourself to that uh, to get that data. Fantastic. <clears throat> uh, all right, well, Karen, Nick, thank you very, very much. You guys are a great partner for the race. We really appreciate you. Um, I think we all got uh, probably a combination of smarter and probably a little more confused, um, just, <laughs> like, just like any time you go out on the water. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't, don't overcomplicate it. Like sometimes, you know, run your route, make short-term decisions, and then run it again. Don't, you know, don't overcomplicate it in your mind. Sometimes the simple things are the right things. Um, that would be how I would look at it. All right. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Have, have a great day. Um, and uh, support at predictman.com for the folks on here who uh, may have a question tomorrow, the next day, or in the next two weeks. Cool. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, everybody.